Good morning. Welcome to the shop, everybody. It's going on 6.30 a.m. here. I'm getting ready to load up and head over to a customer's house. I'm going to be installing some custom countertop, window, sill things that I've been working on. And uh, that's going to be the fun we're having today. So I've pretty much got the truck all loaded up. I've got all my tools. I've, I've brought a sander I'm going to need, my screw guns, a whole bunch of stuff. I've got the truck loaded. The only thing I've really got left is to get these uh, maple slabs loaded up. Um, this one's black walnut. That's not going. That's for my table. But these three pieces here, we got to get in the back of the truck and get ready to uh, move them over to the customer's place. Now... I don't know, probably a week ago, I was at this customer's home, and we cut this slab in half there, because this was one piece of maple, and then we notched it out, made a few cuts so everything would custom fit, I did it right there on site, you know, I wanted to make sure we could have the best possible fit, and to me, might as well just cut it there, if you can, and, uh, pre-fit it all and you know make sure everything fits good which we did and it all fit real nice so I ended up bringing these pieces back here to my shop where I made this jig for my router stuck them in there used the router to get them nice and flat and sit and level and then I went ahead and belt sanded and bust out my five inch disc sander and sanded the crap out of them with that as well and then, it, then, I, uh, then I moved on to some more finishing work, which was putting down a pre-stain and putting on about three coats of red oak stain. Maple's tough to stain. It doesn't really accept the stain as well as some other woods, so there was a little bit of difficulty there. Um, you know, after the stain dried, then I went ahead and used a quad art steel wool went down and just kind of roughed them up lightly and started some clear coat. All I did to clear coat these was use a wipe on satin polyurethane. So it's nice thin coat, but it gives it a real nice sheen and it just it doesn't look plasticky. You know, there's uh I've done a lot of stuff in the past where it looks like plastic and you know, at the time I thought it looked good, but I guess as you mature so does your preferences. For me, I like this real satin look. The customer absolutely loves it, so that's a win-win. Um, like I said, just got to get these things loaded up, and it'll be a quick trip over to their house, and we'll start installing these things. So this is a perfect time for you to hit subscribe. Um, we haven't gotten into doing any real work yet, but make sure you hit subscribe. Show your support. Also, give this video a thumbs up. If you want to follow some of my other work, there's Instagram and Facebook links below. You can check those out. Listen, just want to thank you in advance. Let's get going on this project. I've got the countertops loaded up and it's time to hit the road. All right, we made it. The countertops made it in one piece as well. It's time to get this thing unloaded, get my sawhorses set up so I've got a little workbench area and uh, get to work. Got everything set up here for the most part. Changed my shoes quick so I'm not uh, trampling my muddy boots in their house. Uh, my sneakers are a little wet from the porch, but at least it won't be all mud. Let's, uh, let's go inside and I'll show you guys where uh, the counters are going to go. Alright, so this is what we're looking at. This is a 
corner of the customer's kitchen area here. This is uh, this is where we're going to be putting the large countertop in front of the two windows, and then we have a single that'll go in front of the single. Um, this is where I'll be working today, between here and the porch. I'll try to keep you guys up to speed, moving the camera back and forth so you guys can uh, see what's going on. But I got a quite a bit to do, so it's time to get to work. Hey, have you hit subscribe to my channel yet? Listen, don't forget to jump down a little bit, hit subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, show me your support, show me you're tuning in, watching this stuff, and you enjoy it. Listen, I appreciate it. I thank you guys a lot. Let's get back to it. This silly cat wants to be in the video. Keeps blocking my shots. Here's your chance of uh, fame. You want to say hi? <laughs> Purring like crazy. All right, so there they are just resting in place. We're gonna actually be adding a stick in each corner and one in the center here. But I've got a few other things I've gotta do first. I'm gonna drill some shallow holes on the bottom sides. Uh, probably one per each window near the ends down here. And what I'm gonna do is put a wooden peg in there and just make it so it'll kind of help hold this in so this won't pull away from the sill. So we don't want to screw through this top and screw this thing in place. Eventually the trim will go on and that'll help hold this all down. But the peg will help keep this from pulling out. Because we'll also have a hole drilled in the sill. Now I'm going to put uh, two on the big one, one on each end, and probably one or two on the smaller one there as well. So i got to take these back outside and drill a few holes. I know I probably shouldn't have brought them in, but I brought them in just to make sure everything was still fitting properly. Well, we got the first sill outside here, getting ready to drill the holes for these uh, little dowels I'm gonna use. These are gonna help, this is what I was talking about, these will go in here to help this from pulling away from the window sill. Um, I'm going to use my cordless screw gun for this and the reason is I can get more control when I let go of the trigger it doesn't just keep spinning where in my drill it just keeps spinning it'll keep biting and just drill right on much deeper than what I want and what I need I brought the corded drill though to drill the ends of the sticks a little more power and uh, it takes a little bit longer sometimes to drill down into the grain like that So my bit's a little bit dull on here, which honestly is okay with me. Cause like I said, I don't want a lot of bite. I don't want this thing to just grab and go right through this countertop. Cause that would be really bad. <laughs> yes, it's got the stopper thing on here, but these things always move and yeah, whatever. Anyway, here's the pegs. That's how those are gonna sit. Now I've got these uh, little plugs that'll pop in those holes. For when we bring this inside and it'll mark where the holes will be so now we got to pull these pegs back out and these pop in here and we'll set this in place and give it a tap and it'll mark for the next set of holes this is what they look like though just making sure I got the right ones yep cool throw those throw those all right, let's go inside and uh, set this in the window. I got my little markers in each hole here. And now it's time to set the sill in place. 
give it a little tap and it'll show us where we need to drill. Make sure everything's in where it's going to be. Got to make sure it's all pushed back and um, lined up right because you don't want multiple marks really. So that should be it. Awesome. Set this top aside. Get the drill. There's no nails. That could have made for an interesting thing if I hit a couple of nails. <laughs> not much you can do though. I'm not planning to glue these in here. I'm going to glue these into the countertop. That way there, if it needs to be replaced or it needs more work done some other time, it should just be able to pop it right out. No issues. Make sure these fit. Look good. Get some glue. I got my pegs and my glue ready. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these in place. I found putting glue on the peg is much better than putting glue in the hole. You put the glue in the hole, it ends up always being too much and the peg never sits down in place like it should. So, a little bit of glue on here. Probably should have brought my mallet in, but that's all right. Use the old trusty finger here. Second one's in. I'm gonna use my high tech hammer and uh, Tap those in place. Good. Wipe off any excess glue because, like I said, I don't want this glued into the windowsill. These are just going to help hold it there. Let's see how we made out. Probably have to open this window. This is going to have to be dropped in place, not slid into place. And the handle on the window here is going to be in the way. So take our time. Set this in nice and easy. Boom. There it is. Looks gorgeous. Window shots, plenty of room underneath it. Um, yeah, time to move on to the big one. Hopefully it works out just as good. So I got a couple spots marked out here on the bigger counter, two spots. That's where I'm gonna drill into them for the pegs on this one. Again, I'm only gonna do two pegs kind of one in the middle of each uh, each piece here and then uh, we'll use those two I don't know marking things I've got we'll put this in place and tap it down and mark where those holes will be
sure the sill's cleaned out. Pretty good. Okay. pop these in here and uh, do a dry fit before we glue these pegs into the top. That one's in place. Now that we have the pegs in place for the countertops, I've got a measure for the sticks we're going to put in. The sticks are going to help hold these in place so that they're not leaning like this one is. This has a little, quite a bit of weight sticking out past the sill. And uh, I want to put some sticks in here to help keep this sitting nice and level. In case somebody leans on it or something, it won't dip down. We'll do the same thing with the single window behind me. Get a couple measurements and uh, start cutting sticks. Also, quick note for my wife. You saw me take that ring off earlier? I know you did. It's because I did not want to scratch these tops. I'm done fooling around with those tops, so I just want to make sure you, okay? It's there. All right, so I've got my small level, and I'm getting ready to just measure this. I did already measure these once in the beginning, but now that we've got everything in place and things have been sanded and whatnot, I just want to take a second measurement so once I cut these sticks, there's no adding the wood back on. So, let's see what we got. I got this level here. So I gotta make sure to lift this up into a level position. Right there. And we're looking at 37 and 5 eighths. I'm gonna kind of double check all of these real quick. Just see if they're all running about the same. And they're not. So what that means is I'll cut my 37 and 5 eighths, get it in there, and then we'll work on each one as we go down through. All right, so we took that measurement at 37 and 5 eighths, and, well, how am I gonna cut that out of this curvy stick, right? I mean, it's gonna be tough. So this is what I gotta do. I take the stick, I'm gonna want it this way. Turn it upside down. Place it so it's flat on the floor. The end needs to be flush and sitting level. And I need the stick to be roughly in place to where I'm going to want to mount it on the bottom side of the countertop. Now with my level here so I can see it, it's time to start raising the countertop into a level position. The bubble's on. Now I know this is going to have to have an angle cut in the bottom here. With the stick sitting level, holding the countertop level, sitting down where it should, got it tilted back like it should be, time to make a mark. Put my pencil in here, 
market. Now, that's only a rough line. I can't cut that line. The thickness of my pencil is going to throw that line off. So now we need to add to that line making the highest line being my cut line. Now it wasn't a whole quarter of an inch difference, but again, I'd rather take my time and make a few cuts to get it correct than make one cut and have it be wrong and have to go get another stick, sand it, clear coat it, come back in another day or so. So I'm kind of just trying to take my time here and uh, make sure I don't have to redo this. Now we'll go outside, cut this stick down and uh, see if we can get this to fit nicely in place. Now, there's nothing too crazy or fancy going on here other than me clamping this bad boy in place so it doesn't move. If I was in my shop, I'd probably use my bench vise so this didn't go anywhere, but on site, you gotta work with what you got. Put another clamp here on the end. All right, so we're gonna be cutting that line closer to the edge. I did cut these really long so that I had room to do this, and I'm still gonna cut this pretty long. Um, again, it's easier to take away than it is to add back. So I'm actually gonna take, I don't know, almost another quarter of an inch past that line. See the rough angle I've got marked here with my pencil. Just start making a cut. So I've got my first stick cut and in place. It's uh, I don't know, it's about half an inch too long, which isn't a big deal. Um, this is the way it's going to be in there though. So now what I'll do, well, I've got a little trick that I'll do to uh, show me what my level cut needs to look like on the bottom. The gap between the countertop and the sill is the same thickness as my level. So I'll put my level on the ground take my pencil and put it right in the corner and make myself a mark all the way around the base of the leg here. By keeping this flat on the ground, keeping the level flat on the ground, that'll give me a nice level line with the floor. So this cut will rest nice and easy on the floor. This is my new cut line. Comes around here just like that and tapers up with this old line. Time to take this outside and uh, trim it off. Do my best here to save the line. So again, I'll have some room for sanding. All right, take this bad boy inside and uh, see how she fits. That should be pretty darn close. Possible need for a little bit of sanding, but let's go see. Lots of in and out shots today, so bear with me. So that's in. It's fitting well. Got to do four more. A little bit of a time constraint, so I'm going to kick the camera in high speed, stop all the talking, get the rest of these cut and in place. Before I get to cutting the rest of the legs, I've got to go ahead and drill into the top of the one we just finished so we could fit the peg in there 
measure, drill here, kind of get that in place so it's not falling all over when we fit up the other two on this countertop. All right, so we got our stick from inside. This is the top end. We're gonna need to drill a hole for that peg. That should be good for this one. Looks good. I'm also gonna put a small one in. Not gluing these in place yet. We're just popping them in for a quick little uh, test fit. All right, so that looks good. We gotta get our little marking. Oh, little marking thingies. There they are. Take these inside, pop them in the stick, put it under the counter, give it a tap, mark our new holes, and drill them out. All right, back inside, got my marking things. Gonna pull these dowels out. It's kind of nice with both holes drilled. Be able to mark both at the same time. Holes in the stick are just a little too shallow. All right, guys, so that's it for this build. As you can see, everything's been installed. As always, I just want to thank you for watching. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time.